All right, I've just spent a lovely day with some excellent people here in uh, uh, Tipperg the Netherlands, and uh, we are just about to leave for the UK. I booked some ferry tickets, and uh, I'm leaving from um, Dunkirk. Uh, Dunkirk, uh, whatever it's in French, uh, in uh, about 16 hours or so. And we're just going to set off. Uh, I had to have actually having a France maps in the GPS, so I'm hoping to be able to find all my exits by the good old tried method of looking at a map and looking at sides. Should probably all right. And hopefully we're going to be on a ferry soon. And hopefully we're not going to die driving on the wrong side of the road. I've been spending hours still looking at UK road law trying to figure it out. Doesn't look too bad, but it's going to be pretty confusing. Hopefully I'll get a hang of it. But we've got to get a move on. So, no today for Netherlands. Uh, they have very weird speed signs on the smaller ways. They're tiny. And they have weird road markings. They don't look like anything else I've seen in Europe. I'm bad, but it's pretty normal as far as the driving goes. There's a guy in the middle of the street taking pictures. Uh, odd thing about uh, Netherlands streetlights, they don't do the red yellow thing, they just to go straight to green, so it's really stressful to get going. There we go. Arrow just turned green from red. Oh, there we go. Alright. We are entering. Belgium! 50, 90, 120, okay. Alright, it's uh, time for a pit stop. This brake, left front, has gotten something wonky with it. It started screaming slightly a couple hundred kilometers ago, and it's gotten ever worse. And now it's running quite warm and it's clearly slightly engaged all the time. So. I'm going to have to take this wheel off and uh, give it a proper thorough check over. I stopped once before and had just a look with spray and brake cleaner on it. It was better for a while but now it's clearly a lot worse. So, ah, time to get to work. Yeah, that's gathered some proper brake dust and there's some proper heat as well. The lug nuts were almost too hot to touch. That's an odd though. Brake caliper is brand new. I'm not really certain what caused this, but yeah, this is going to have to cool off for a while. It almost looks as if there's some debris stuck between there, given how unevenly it's been wearing that. Yeah. Looks bad. Yeah, this is run properly hot. That's steam. Hoi hoi. Not nice. Not nice at all. I've ever pants out. They look a bit glazed, but not entirely ruined. They're not one day, but they're just very, very old. Yeah, what I'm figuring is perhaps there's been so much gunk build up in the middle there that it's just not not clearing out properly anymore. The caliper let go just fine, so I don't think the caliper's vision, the caliper's uh, new, it's just a couple of months old. Shouldn't be going bad yet. Yeah, I'm just gonna clean this up and see, hopefully, all it takes is just cleaning those, making sure that moves and then we'll be good, good to go because the bearing's just fine still. This, this turns like new. So we haven't broken anything, thankfully. All right, I think I've got it worked out now. I've cleaned up all the surface, surfaces that are roughened off the disc uh, with a steel brush, roughened off the pads with a brass brush. There was a lot of b bad build-up on these. And above all, there was a lot of crap build-up here on the slides. There was probably a millimeter thick coating, so I think that might be the issue. Nothing wrong with the actual caliper mechanism. It's sliding fine up and down. No issues there, and I'm pretty sure the caliper's okay. And everything's cooled down now, spinning fine. 
gonna reassemble, we'll be on our way. Mmm, brake dust. Yeah, all back together. Looks a lot better, this would not turn by hand before. Uh, I think these squeal pads, or whatever you call them, might be a big part of the issue because obviously they've come loose. One of them was a bit deformed, so it wouldn't latch in place anymore, so I just got rid of it. But let's uh, see if we can brake a few times and still have the wheel turning. Little brake pressure. I cannot turn it. If I let go, it goes. Real hard. I'll see if you can see that as well. That's excellent. We're good to go. Ha! Screw you, entropy. Gotcha. Oh, there we go. Clean up the mess. And we're ready to go. And a little reward for fixing that problem. So promptly and efficiently. Because it's like, uh, I'm at, I think it's called Texaco. Uh, like 50 kilometers off the border of Belgium. And they do this like uh, subway thing where they make a sandwich for you. It's quite nice. A bit too much meat, not enough vegetables, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, no more constant brake squealing. It was driving me absolutely insane because I knew something was wrong and I knew I had to do it. But the weird thing about this border crossing was there wasn't a single gas station for about I don't know, 50 to 100 kilometers. This is nothing. And that's just about when it started getting bad. So I had to drive and drive and drive and knew something was up and knew something was bad and knew I had to do something, but there was nowhere to go. And uh, oh, she, she's riding so much happier now. I could feel the brake pedal, but there's, a, there's actually a feeling difference in the brakes now. Like just in the pedal feel, I was very surprised. So they must have been quite jammed up, quite severely jammed up actually on that side. The right side seems to have no problems, but the left one was uh, pretty much fucked. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, another 130 kilometers to the Belgian border, and uh, then I'm entering France, for which I have no maps, except on the GPS which my very nice Dutch host gave to me uh, prior to my departure. Thank you very much, Ross. Bye. I certainly need that since I cannot fit the France map into my old GPS. It just has a 4GB memory card. So, with no further ado, let's floor it. Okay, that made no difference. Something quite specific I've noticed about the more central European countries, which are more rural in nature, as you can see, like cows, uh, is Right now it's uh, sowing seeds and like uh, they're putting seeds into the ground. They're making food for lots of people and that's nice. But uh, like where I come from it's rural small scale, usually private farmers, couple people doing the thing, having a few cows, that, that sort of thing. When they put the cow dung onto the fields, it, it pretty much just smells like cow. It's not a really nasty smell, it's more of an old-timey country smell. But when they do it here, in the bigger countries, it's an absolutely nasty smell. It smells like septic tank. Like you take the cap of a drain and take a deep sniff. And uh, not to say that these countries smell, but they do. It's deeply unpleasant. It's not a hugely potent smell, but it's there. You're always going out. Do I have a drain in this van? Do I have a drain in this van? Alright, we are getting somewhere. Because there, it says Calais. Calais. Calais, however the French say it. And that's French. 
that's not where we're going, but it's along the same road. Now we're going to, going to Dunkirk, but we're going to take, take the cheapest ferry. And uh, that's it, France soon. And I'm going to be out of the map, so that's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, that sign says, Dunkirk, Dunkirk, Dunkirk. Uh, Dun Dunkirk. 43 kilometers. It's, uh, I think it's like the first uh, province after uh, past the border. So it should be pretty easy to find. It's pretty much two turn offs after we enter France. But it should be very easy to find, I hope. Well, we are just a bit from the border to France now. And this has to be the flattest place I've ever seen. It's just no hills. No, nothing. Just flatlands. Flatter than Denmark. Flatter than Germany. Flatter than the Netherlands. Even flatter than Finland. Wow. Pretty cool. <laughs> you like mountains and then you get stunned by a lack of them. Guess I've spent too much time in Norway. Alright, I think we're coming up to France. Because I can see one of those Euro signs there. Right? Yes, indeed. France. Road construction. This is 130 road. 50 city, 98 of city, 130 on the highway. Okie dokes. I'm just turning into one lane road. Try to take it easy around the border in case there's some kind of border inspection. Want to catch me for doing something illegal, but this seems cool. I wouldn't imagine there being any stops. Uh, since this is such an extremely busy road. I've seen several British right hand drive cars pass me by already. Oh, I'm getting a bit too slow. So, now I'm going to be looking for the A16, which is going to be like some distance into the future. Hopefully not too far. Or well, if I go too far, I'm going to have to figure something out. And what's the first thing we see in France, if not a lovely old Citroen AX? I'm probably the only guy in the world who loves these, like, cheap, horrid French hatchbacks. <laughs> The AX was super economical, most models anyway. This is not going to convey well to the camera at all, but uh, this is an excellent sunset. I'm driving into this, and it's very hazy, it's, hard. it's so hazy and cloudy, that even though you can see the sun, you're not blinded by it at all. It's more like an extremely bright moon than an extremely dull sun. And I did figure out we are a kind I think this either is also the A16 or it's becoming the A16 in 133 kilometers because there's been a bunch of signs telling me about that, so I'm feeling pretty safe. Region, no pas, vecala, baguette, oulala, oui oui, bon appétit, Renault Megane. All right, I'm now officially lost in France. Uh, I got confused at one of his signs for. Calais started coming, and I was supposed to be in Dunkirk, but uh, apparently the port is like... That looks like what I figured out, kind of. But I'm confused. There, there are, there's a lot of ports in Dunkirk, like, m closer to where it says on the map. So... A bit confused. But I guess we'll try about this. I've got plenty of time. Welcome to Dunkirk Port. Well, that's a DFDS. Hey, so just confirm that I'm at the right place uh, at the wrong time from uh, quite a few hours early. That is intentional as planned. And uh, I would have needed those extra hours if not for this thing. Like, I don't know, seems to be like seven year old GPS. So thank you, Ross. <laughs> you saved me. 
that thing saved me because I still this thing like it doesn't seem to eat uh, coordinates where it doesn't have maps so I couldn't even put any coordinates in so, so I had no idea where I was going and I misinterpreted the signs the signs uh, saying you know, 116 kilometers uh, A16 were just incorrect absolutely wrong I have no idea what they were about it's probably some safety thing if you get stuck to tell the authorities where you are ah but we'll figure it out I just gotta wait a few hours disembox uh, between one and two right, let's cut the long story short the horn didn't work on this vehicle before now it does I met some nice Romanian guys uh, had a bit of a talk uh, they gave me a hand troubleshooting the issue with a horn on this thing so uh, I started by just uh, measuring around at the horn checked did it get voltage no it got random voltages every time you press the button so obviously I had to had a wiring or relay fault uh, figured out where the, where, the, where the relay was by just uh, to tooting the horn and taking it and it's back there took it out tested it with uh, just jump leads and the battery and it measured uh, 2 ohms if you banged it on the headlight it uh, showed 0.1 ohm so clearly it was not in very good shape so I just drilled a hole in it and filled it up with alcohol and now it works and the Romanian guys gave me a hand with that it was very nice had a very nice long chat so now at least, if I'm about to die in the UK, I can honk first. Hey, and before I forget, I traded a bottle of uh, Trollstegen water for Romanian super pulpy orange juice. Bit of an odd trade, but yeah, now I've got juice in the morning. It's really nice, a lot of pulp in it. And above all, it's a nice trinket. All right, and we are through the UK customs. Still on the French side. There's one of the boats, not mine, still leaving at two and it's midnight. But we've got this far. Just have to wait, uh, probably an hour and a half to get on board, something like that. And then we'll be head heading to the UK. Uh, this was by far uh, the most uh, cumbersome border passing yet. Uh, not so much due to the water, but uh, I had to show my passport to no less than uh, two different people and uh, they even had me open up all the doors and give away all my drugs. Uh, anyway, we're on our route, it's gonna be fine. And now I can just sit back, relax, have a, have a curtain with a drawn and watch some anime. Oh, uh, when you get used to owning a tablet computer, you really get used to it. <laughs> I feel like a trucker. Oh God, I'm dying. I started loading the cars to what I believe to be my departure, and I am so nervous, incredibly nervous. I'm afraid. Everything's going to be horribly wrong in the UK, so I set this camera up for low quality mode. I'm just going to have this thing running every single centimeter I drive in the UK. And also when I drive aboard the ferry, because the way that Frenchman's dancing around, I don't have the slightest clue what he wants for these guys to do.
All right, I guess we're on board. That seemed a bit messy. I think I got put in the wrong lane. But well, perhaps not. We've got other people coming over there. Uh, confusing. It's weird though, I booked 2.35 meters, so I could have gone to the like cheaper place, but they put me up with the lorries. This is probably the 4.35 meter booking. Oh well, I'm not complaining. 5.25 pounds. No, worst deal. Even worse than the worst of the gas station foods. Worst, worst value, worst. It's bad. Lorries, water, lorries, water. The van! I am admitting to my complete ignorance of a subject matter, but I think that's the skyline of a city in a country somewhere close to England and France. Day of arrival there. Probably about half an hour from disembarking. Uh, I'm not usually nervous about things, but this entire driving thing, man. I don't know. I don't like screwing things up.
I'm on your fucking road! So, so like, uh, come out. Like, I have no idea, I don't have a number. Right, so I'm driving down now. Like the big van. Oh, they are. Right, where can I park? Like, in front of a big van. Yeah, but I can't on my drive. Right, I'll give it a go. Fucking hell, man! How's the drive? Your fucking road! You're fucking insane! How is it? Everything's on the wrong side and then you have a roundup of a million exits and two lanes going straight through. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit crazy, isn't it? And if you turn... I tried to turn onto two fucking service stations along the road. Yeah. I go to the right exit and there's no service station. Yeah. It just goes out in fucking nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, you just got it now, so... I'm fucking dead. Yeah. Do you want to drink or anything? Well, coffee... a bit too early for coffee. Oh, yeah, yeah. But if you want to make tea, that would be yeah. very nice because I've, I've never been this awake before in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. well, I I, I, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying I, I, I've been literally fearing for my life. <laughs> Cause... Well, there's a casualty of English driving. Something went bonk when I had to accelerate very quickly. Mm, it seems to have made it okay though. Well, it was stopped, and it's. Light eight side, it was dark when I started. Ah, you go there, give me some darkness. Driving in the UK for the first time in the middle of the night on the M25 into a little tiny outskirt of London, which does barely exist on the map. Oh Christ, that, 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 that was one of the most, if not the most intense experience of my entire life thus far. For three hours I just sat absolutely glued to the wheel. It was like taking your first driving lesson and just throwing yourself out on one of the most congested, heavily trafficked roads in Europe while you're <laughs> oh, the, the entire wrong side of the road thing is just so so bad and gotten probably at least two somewhat hazardous situations uh, not, nothing serious though, didn't cause no one had to emergency brake for me but I had to emerge into accelerate, hence we tipped over. A suitcase is when I uh, made a very incorrect turn. I'm fucking dead. You're fucking dead.